this is the video lesson for section 2.4. Okay, so hopefully you've been watching the other videos for chapter 2 and chapter 1 because, you know, since you've been learning the same stuff over and over again, like I said, these are sections that we're going to skip in class. Um, you should be able to easily catch up with those on your own. And just remember that not all my video lessons cover every chapter. Like when we get to the harder chapters, I don't do any video lessons. So just keep that in mind. If you're getting a little nervous about, wait a minute, is she actually going to teach me in class? Yes, I will. Okay, this is eighth grade information, so I think y'all can get it on a video. All right, so section 2.4 is on chemical reactions. So we've learned about states of matter. We've learned about physical changes. We've learned about mixtures and elements and compounds and substances and all different kinds of things. So now let's get to the good stuff, and that is chemical reactions. Okay, that's one of the reasons I love chemistry so much is the chemical reactions that we get to see. So a chemical property is the ability of a substance to change to a different substance. Okay, so physical properties, remember, those were things we could observe without changing the substance. Like, a physical property would be, my shirt is blue. Okay, a chemical property, on the other hand, is the ability to change it into a different substance. So remember, we're not actually changing it, we just could. So for example, I could say, my shirt is flammable. I didn't actually set it on fire, but if I did, it would burn easily. Okay, so examples, like I just did or flammable because something could catch on fire. It has the ability to. It's not on fire right now, but it could. And corrosive. For example, acids are corrosive. Okay, so you can see the little picture. If you get on your skin, it'll kind of start eating through your skin. Um, again, it doesn't mean that if I just get out a bottle of acid, all of a sudden my skin's disappearing. It means if I put it on my skin, it has the ability to be corrosive. All right, so those are examples of chemical properties. All right, so next is a chemical change. Okay, so remember, a physical change is a change that does not actually change the substance. So for example, ice melting. Ice is solid water. When it melts, it becomes liquid water. It's still water. Both examples are water. All right, on a chemical change though, you're actually changing the substance, okay? So it involves a change in the fundamental components of a substance. All that means, don't let words like fundamental components throw you off. It just means that the substance turns into something else. So examples would be like burning. When I burn wood, it's no longer wood. What we're left with at that point is ashes. We've decomposed it and broken it down. Um, another example would be decomposed. When you leave things out in a landfill, they break down and decompose over time. Um, a kind of gross example of decomposition would be animals on the side of the road that have been hit. Okay, you start out driving by and they're their regular size and then it's real hot day after day when you drive by they start bloating up and get real big. Okay, that's all the gases inside forming in their body because they're decomposing. Okay, so those are examples of chemical changes. And so again, what you end with is not what you start with. Okay, I can't just pull all the ashes out and push them together real hard and be like, look, I have wood again. Okay, it doesn't work that way because we've actually turned it into something else. So in this class, obviously, we're going to be focusing on chemical reactions a lot. All right, so a substance present at the start of a reaction are called the reactants. Those are what we start with. We put those together to produce the products. So the substances produced in a reaction are the products. So for example, this is a reaction of hydrogen and oxygen making water. So the hydrogen and oxygen, because that's what we're starting with, those are the reactants. Once those bond and make the water, water is the product, so that's what I end with. Now, a lot of people get these mixed up throughout the whole year, and later in the um, year, it becomes a big problem if you have them mixed up. Okay, so just think of it this way. I can't start with a product. Like, if I go to my kitchen and say, hmm, I think I'm going to bake a cake. Do I go to the pantry and pull out a cake? No, that's what I'm trying to make. I'm trying to make a cake, so that's going to be my product, so I can't start with that. I would go get out eggs and flour and sugar, my reactants, and then I would make my cake. Okay, so you can't start with the product. That's what you're making. All right, so reactants react to produce products. All right, so there are many, many signs that a chemical reaction has occurred. Okay, one of them is a change in color. All right, and you'll see many of these throughout the year over and over and over again. 
So one example that you probably have already seen in class at this point is me pouring a gas, um, and that's when I put copper in nitric acid. Nitric acid is clear, but when I put the copper in there, it turned a blue-green color. And then it also produces brownish gas. If you see a color change, that's a sign that a chemical reaction has occurred. Next one is production of a gas. That actually still applies to the copper example because we produced a brown gas. But another example is like if you see any kind of fizzing or bubbling in a liquid, that is a sign that a gas is being produced, and so that's a chemical reaction. Next is a change in temperature. A lot of reactions, when you um, start them, they'll start heating up. But the thing is, and the reason I did the icy hot patch, is because reactions can also get colder too. Everyone remembers they can get hotter, but a lot of people don't realize they can get colder. Okay, so a change in temperature. So don't tell me heat. Whoops, sorry, pointed the wrong one. Don't tell me heat. You need to tell me change in temperature because it could get hotter or colder. All right, next one is production of light. An example would be like a glow stick. Okay, when you crack the glow stick, what you're doing is you're mixing the two chemicals inside and then it spontaneously starts glowing. That's because a chemical reaction is occurring within the glow stick. And then the last one is formation of a precipitate. And so we'll talk about what that is on the next slide. And again, I'll show you an example of what a precipitate actually looks like in class. Because again, showing it on video is just not really that good. Okay, so color, gas, temperature, light, and precipitate. Those are five signs that a chemical reaction has occurred. So what is this precipitate? A precipitate is a solid that forms during a chemical reaction involving a liquid mixture. I'm not really sure why and is up there, but <clears throat> let's face it, I made this PowerPoint, so it's going to have typos in it. All right, so it's a solid formed in a liquid mixture. Okay, so what it looks like is this. Okay, these were two clear liquids mixed together. And when they're mixed together, you can see this yellow solid has formed. Over here, again, you had a bluish liquid and a clear liquid was mixed into it. And I know this one's probably hard to see, especially in the video, but there's like a solid mass right here. Now, the solid is not like I can sit there and pull this out, okay? It looks really muddy. Like, you'll see it in class. It looks cloudy, it looks muddy, and eventually that solid would settle at the bottom. So if I wanted to get it out, what could I do? We talked about separating mixtures. We have a solid and a liquid. We could filter it you can filter and get that solid out of the liquid. All right, so that is what a precipitate looks like. And again, I'll show you examples in class. Once you see it in class, you'll fully understand precipitate. So the last thing we're gonna talk about before our section assessment is the law of conservation of mass. All right, law of conservation of mass states the same thing every law of conservation of blank states. And that is blank is neither created nor destroyed. You learn many laws of conservation throughout your years in science. There's law of conservation of mass, of matter, of energy, of momentum, of charge. It just goes on and on. And so all of those things mean whatever's at the end cannot be created or destroyed. So law of conservation of mass states that in any physical or chemical process, mass is neither created nor destroyed. Now when you get into nuclear processes, that's a little different. Okay, so that's why we're focusing on physical and chemical processes in here. So during any chemical reaction, the mass of the products is always equal to the mass of the reactants. So what this picture is showing you right here is we have two beakers. They each have a clear liquid, and the total mass is 92.95. What they did was they mixed the two beakers. So see, now this one's empty. This one's become white. So what did it form? A solid and a liquid, a precipitate. Um, this one became white, but the mass is still 92.95. The mass does not change. Okay, it's impossible. Like, you can't lose some mass or gain mass in a reaction. If you can figure out how to gain mass, then you need to let me know because we're going to be super rich because that's not possible. All right, so in a physical or chemical process. All right, so mass of reactants always equals the mass of the product. So if I start with 50 grams, I have to end with 50 grams. I can't all of a sudden have 70 grams. All right, so let's look at that section assessment. So, how does a chemical change affect the composition of matter? Well, the definition of a chemical change is it changes the composition of matter. Okay, so let's just put it changes to a new substance. All right, it changes to a new substance. Okay, number two, name the five signs that a chemical reaction has taken place. Well, clearly we just listed this. 
Okay, you have a change in color, you have a change in temperature, you have production of a gas, you have production of light, and you have a formation of a precipitate. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. Color, temperature, gas, light, precipitate. All right, so number three, in a chemical reaction, how does the mass of the reactants compare with the mass of the products? Remember, law of conservation of mass says we can't create or destroy any mass, so what we start with is what we end with. So how is it compared? They are equal. Okay, the mass of the reactants must equal the mass of the products. All right, so number four, what's the difference between a physical and a chemical change? All right, well, we discussed back a couple of sections ago that physical does not change the substance. Chemical does. Okay, physical just changes some, maybe like the look of it. Like, for example, when ice melts into water, it kind of looks different. It's no longer solid, it's a liquid. It's just a state of matter change. Whereas chemical change, we are making something else. Okay, so physical change, physical does not change to a new substance. Chemical does. Okay, so physical, even though it may look different, physical, it's still the same substance. Okay, even though water looks different than ice, it's still H2O. Whereas chemical changes like burning wood, that clearly has turned into a new substance. All right, so let's look at, I believe there's a few more questions on this section, Cessna. All right, so classify the following changes as physical or chemical. So when we do these, all we need to think of is, is it the same substance? Did it just change its state of matter or did it actually turn into something else? So I'm just gonna abbreviate with P for physical and C for chemical. So water boils. If we boil water and make steam, is it still water? Yes. Ice is H2O, liquid water is H2O, steam, which is when you boil water, is H2O. Okay, so that would just be physical. Whenever you see anything about just a state of matter or phase change, those are always physical. All right, milk turns sour. Well. When milk turns sour, I sure don't want to drink it because is it milk any longer? No, it's turning into something else at that point. Okay, it'll start getting chunky. Um, if you ever notice when milk starts getting sour when you open it, you'll hear a little psh. That's because it's building up a gas and production of a gas is an example of a, or is a sign that a chemical change has occurred. Okay, we did that one time. We went on vacation. My husband, he opened up a chocolate milk and then he accidentally left it out. When we came back home from vacation, it had been sitting out the whole time and all that gas had built up and literally the lid exploded off the top. And when we came home, there was chunky chocolate milk all over the carpet, all over our couch, all over the wall, all over the ceiling. It was disgusting. So, if you wanna know whether or not milk souring really makes a gas, I'm here to tell you, it does. Terrible story, but true story. All right, so next, <clears throat> excuse me. So next thing, salt dissolves in water. Okay, well, when we put salt in water and dissolve it, does it still just taste like salt and water? Yeah. Okay, all we've done is just broken down the salt, but that's still just a physical change. All right, and the next one, a metal rusts. When a metal rusts, does the color change? Starts out silver and rust is kind of like a reddish orangey brown. Okay, so a color change is a sign that a chemical change has occurred. All right, so that would be a chemical change. All right, and then last one. Hydrogen and oxygen react chemically to form water. How much water would form if 4.8 grams of hydrogen reacts with 38.4 grams of oxygen? Okay, well in this example, this would be a law of conservation of mass question because we're starting with 4.8 grams of hydrogen and we're starting with 38.4 grams of oxygen. And so what I would need to do is add those two things together. Okay, when I add those two things together, that will give me my total of my reactants. Okay, so let's see, when we add this together, we get two, 43.2 grams, and that's total 
were my reactants. That's my oxygen and my hydrogen together. Okay, so we want to know how much product will we get? Well, the reactants has to equal the products. Okay, law of conservation of mass states that the reactants have to equal the products. So if I have 43.2 grams of reactants, I need 43.2 grams of products, or in this case, of water. And that would be my answer. Okay, so if I give you reactants and ask you about products, it just has to be the same. All right, so that is chapter two. Hopefully you found it pretty easy and a lot of this stuff should be reviewed. And like I said, y'all, from now on, every lesson is not going to be a video, okay? There will just be random, easy sections that I pull out and make video lessons from.